What's up, guys? Derek, moreplaytomorrowdates.com. Today, we're going to be talking about how different anabolic steroids will affect your immune system, the effect it has on your vulnerability to viral infections, and what you should know at this, you know, more critical time than ever to know how exogenous hormone use is going to impact your resistance to coronavirus infections. First thing you need to know in general, both testosterone and anabolic androgenic steroids adversely affect the immune system um, and leukocyte growth and activity, as well as antibody and uh, cytokine production, especially at super physiological, super physiological dosages. So this is obviously very relevant to the situation going on right now, and it mimics a condition of secondary immunodeficiency. Secondary immunodeficiency, um, much more common than primary immunodeficiency, is characterized by various factors that influence a otherwise normal immune system, like uh, stuff that's infectious, uh, metabolic and environmental factors, stuff like that. So these immune deficiencies are manifested clinically with an increased frequency or unusual complications of common infections and occasionally with the onset of opportunistic pathogen infections. So this is something to obviously take heed of right now. So the first thing we're gonna look at is nandrolone and anadrol. And if you wanna know where I'm pulling this data from, it is uh, on the article on my website. I've already written this all out, so I'm literally just you know reading off my own article here with uh, pulling all the data points that I've already written out. So nandrolone and anadrol. Nandrolone decanoate and anadrol directly induce the production of inflammatory cytokines interleukin-1 beta and tumor necrosis factor alpha in human peripheral blood leukocyte culture. So in this graph here, or table I should say, you can see in experiment one and experiment two, the comparison between reactions to testosterone, DHEA, nandrolone decanoate, and oxymethanolone. Now, testosterone and DHEA had no direct cytokine inducing effect in the same model. Nandrolone decanoate also inhibits interferon production in NDV infected mouse L929 and human wish cells. So as far as breaking down what all of that is, it's not really something you need to delve into above and beyond the fact that it is interfering with immune function in a certain regard, which we're going to detail I'm going to detail later in the video exactly the mechanism here. So just bear with me while I kind of like blast through these like more tedious statistics, but just to, you know, lay out each compound separately. So the next one, Winstrol and Trenbolone effects on the immune system. Winstrol and Trenbolone were found to be genotoxic and cytotoxic to human lymphocytes in a dose dependent manner. So in this table one, you can see stenozolol, um, stenozolol, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. I always have problems saying that one, but you know, Winstrol is what most people are going to refer to it as induced CAs in human lymphocytes. As you can see here in a dose dependent manner, everything just increases as far as the, uh, induced stenozolol induced CAs in the human lymphocytes. You can see abnormal cells increasing in a dose dependent manner, as well as in table two, trenbolone induced CAs in human lymphocytes. Again, abnormal cells increasing in a dose dependent manner. Now moving on to testosterone, Teslac, Anivar, and Winstrol again. This is another model with Winstrol in it. So to evaluate how anabolic steroids affect the immune system, five commercially available steroids with various types of structural differences were studied in a rodent model. I'm not sure why they literally said five commercially available, I suppose, because they're differentiating between testosterone base and testosterone uh, propionate, which is interesting. But anyways, the animals were divided into five groups and treated with group one was testosterone with no ester, apparently testosterone propionate in group two, the steroidal aromatase inhibitor testolactone, which is also called Teslac, which is actually something I referred to in my uh, 90s um IFBB Pro, you know, breakdowns where I went through their interviews with Lee Priest and I heard Teslac brought up a lot. And at the time, I didn't know what it was. And after doing a bit more research, you can see it's actually testolactone, a old school steroidal aromatase inhibitor. Group four, and you might be wondering why is an aromatase inhibitor included in this? It's still a steroid technically. So group four is Anivar and then group five is Winstrol. So the results, significant immunosuppression was observed with all groups. However, by day 10, the Teslac, Anivar, and Winstrol treated groups showed immunostimulation and actually exceeded baseline immunity while the testosterone treated groups maintained immunosuppression. So as you can see in the graph, this is the effect that had via testosterone, testosterone propionate, 
uh, Teslac, Anivar, and Winstrel on the immune system of, this is a rodent model in particular, to truly test the effects of endogenous androgens on the immune system, though a second experiment was then performed based on the results of the first one. So 10 animals maintained in a similar manner to the initial experiment were either treated intact or were castrated and then treated for eight days with Anivar, 1.1 milligrams per kilogram per day, testosterone, 1.1 milligrams per kilogram per day, or Anivar combined with a physiologic amount of testosterone, 15 micrograms per day. So this would otherwise be, you know, super physiologic, testosterone versus therapeutic HRT testosterone, essentially for, you know, the reflection of what that dose is in human, in like an actual, you know, human application here. So Anivar was selected as the comparison anabolic here because it has the greatest anabolic activity of all testosterone analogs as compared to testosterone with a roughly anabolic to androgenic activity of 13 to one. And in the intact animals, after eight days of treatment with Anivar, serum testosterone levels were measured by radio amino assay on tail vein blood and levels were either undetectable or very low, reflecting what would be otherwise, you know, significant HPTA suppression. Like the, you know, you take an oral steroid, obviously you're going to see a reflection in endogenous HPTA suppression in humans and rodents, it's, you know, same kind of deal. So immune function, DCH responses, that's what they're, essentially the immune function is being, is the DCH responses in the study, measured at the same time revealed a 41% increase over baseline. So the testosterone treated group experienced a 36% suppression of immune function. Further treatment for eight days with Anivar combined with physiologic amounts of testosterone eliminated the immune system enhancement provided by Anivar monotherapy and returned the DCH responses to levels that were not significantly different from baseline. So as you can see here, the uh, Anivar only group, you see the spike in the immune system essentially, um, the testosterone group suppression, and then the Anivar and testosterone group, it's you know pretty much you know baseline based on essentially the evening out between Anivar and testosterone. So you have on paper, we would think, okay, Anivar helps the immune system and testosterone hinders the immune system. So I uh, may potentially a therapeutic alternative for enhancing immune function at, you know, during a time of increased vi vulnerability to viral infection, should we be using Anivar, which is what I'm going to get into now. So the results were different in the castrated animals, which is what the main takeaway is from all this. Castration resulted in an increase in immune DCH responses. The mean observed change was 90% greater than intact, which is just pre-castration, so rats before they were castrated, baseline. So that means that castrated rats had a 95% improvement above and beyond rats that weren't castrated on their immune system. Eight-day administration of Anivar to these animals had an immunodepressive effect, returning the DCH response to baseline. So eight-day treatment with Anivar combined with physiologic doses of testosterone produced an even greater suppression. 45% change from baseline. So these observations indicate that immune alterations do occur with anabolic steroids, which are immunosuppressive, when the steroid nucleus is intact and immunostimulatory with nuclear alterations. So what does all that mumbo jumbo mean exactly? This is kind of the conclusion of the whole thing. So how steroids influence immune function in general. So the hypothesis to explain this weird process that's going on, why would, you know, testosterone hinder the immune system? Why is, you know, castration making the immune system better, blah, blah, blah. So basically there's a hypothesis around this and it's as follows and just, you know, follow this graph carefully that I've laid out for you here. So exogenous androgenic anabolic steroids or anabolic androgenic steroids, whatever, produce two effects on the immune system. One is, let's go with A, like the A in the graph, a direct early effect on immune function, which is suppressive. And B, the other effect, an indirect delayed stimulatory effect mediated through the negative feedback on the pituitary. So B results in inhibition of gonadal testosterone through diminished luteinizing hormone release. A decrease in the synthesis of testosterone results in low serum testosterone levels and immune stimulation as a consequence of that. Castration though, by abolishing the modulation of testosterone secretion eliminates the effect of the B, but leaves A completely intact. So in summation, 
the more suppressive a steroid is, the more it can indirectly enhance immune function simply by suppressing the endogenous production of testosterone and its metabolites. However, anabolic steroids will also be genotoxic and cytotoxic to human lymphocytes in a dose-dependent manner. You have to remember that from the beginning. So the only reason anabolic steroids can enhance immunity is by being more tissue selective than testosterone and by shutting down the HPTA, not by inherently being protective. So they too will be inherently immunosuppressive just to a lesser degree based on a few factors, which some of include their tissue selectivity and magnitude of impact on endogenous androgen production suppression. So at the end of the day, the data all suggests that the lower your level of steroids are in the body, the higher level your immune system will function at in parallel. So are you increasing your risk of viral infection right now when you are on cycle? So in summary, the vast majority of studies suggest that steroid use decreases antibody formation, natural killer lymphocyte activity, TNB lymphocyte maturation, and stimulation resulting in immunosuppression. Supraphysiological dosages of common anabolic steroids have been shown to directly influence the production of certain cytokines altering immune function. The results from both animal and human studies suggest that supraphysiological dosages of anabolic androgenic steroids can negatively impact the immune system. So the takeaway from all of this at this time is that with an easily spread virus infecting thousands of people throughout the world right now, it would be prudent to reduce your exogenous anabolic androgenic steroid use at least down to therapeutic replacement levels to support immune function during this time where having increased vulnerability to viral infections is the most risky so regardless if you're you know obviously there's this uh idea going around that oh it's only, if you're old is the only problem you're gonna be fine if you're young and even if that were true regardless if you're young and believe you're invincible based on the mortality rate statistics showing that the elderly are the most at risk of being symptomatic or ending up in critical condition you may still be increasing your chances of becoming a infected carrier who then transmits the virus to the elderly including your parents and grandparents as a result of self-induced immunosuppression via your exogenous androgen use. So I would highly suggest that if you are in the middle of a blast, your gym is probably going to close down soon. At least mine just did. You're not even going to be able to work out properly. I would advise just coming off your blast. There's no reason for anybody to be using high dosages of steroids right now. Like obviously, you know, people are competing and they need to, and they have gyms that they have access to gyms and obviously, you know, there's exceptions where don't take what I say as telling you what to do. I'm just saying advising that it would be in your best interest from a health standpoint to maximize your immune function that you reduce your intake of anabolic steroids right now. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see the article in full, you know, all the studies I referenced, all the hyperlinks to them, I highly recommend you sign up to the newsletter in the video description below because you will get automatically emailed all my articles right when they get published if you sign up to that and you otherwise would not. And you, it's everything's broken down with concise uh, table of contents, subsections, um, all the clinical studies are referenced and hyperlinked for you to go delve into further yourself for your own personal research. It's just a bit more professionally laid out than I have here on YouTube. So anyways, please like and comment on the video too because it does help the algorithm, helps push the video to a new audience which may otherwise not see it, which really does help grow the brand. So if you wanna you know, support this information to help push it to the masses, like I highly suggest you, I highly appreciate when you guys comment and like, and then also follow me on Instagram at more plates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.